to fresh water. Then uh, you mentioned as well coastal erosion, definitely because most of the people live right, right next to the shore and most of the infrastructure assets are next to the shore. So it's not so much that the islands are actually shrinking, but the coastline is moving. You look at wow. pictures from the 1940s, 1950s, 1960s, and you see that those islands, the shape of these islands have changed. Wow. So where maybe you had a hospital, now it's uh, underwater. Right, and, and at, the, at the last COP, the Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs, I think from Tuvalu, he gave a speech from actually a, um, uh, a location on the island that used to be uh, away from the shore. And he was giving his speech with uh, seawater up to his knees. Oh, so to, wow. to, to make people understand through a very uh, strong and, and powerful image that it's actually a real uh, issue, right? And then uh, if you add to that the droughts, uh, the floods, uh, the floods that are also having a, a health impact. We don't really think about that, but it's not just that your house gets flooded. It's so uh, it, it, it has um, an impact on uh, waterborne diseases or malaria, yeah. Yeah. Uh, ch ch cholera, or illnesses like this. Um, and then the increase in the temperature of the water has an impact on coral reefs, uh, so on local fisheries, even, uh, as, uh, yeah, because this, uh, countries are very much dependent in terms of their uh, uh, proteins uh, inputs intake. Sorry, on 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 fish stocks, fish. which are they may be growing somewhere but shrinking somewhere else. So the impact of climate change uh, can be felt uh, pretty much at every level: um, health, uh, the cost of maintaining assets, the cost of building assets. Um, and uh, if we look into more specifically into transport as you you, you...